Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to look at the multi-range current meter. We need to have a current meter that we can dial in so that we can measure different ranges of currents. It would be difficult to have a single current meter that has no settings on it to be able to measure a large range of currents. For example, we want to be able to place a current meter in the circuit that we're trying to measure the current of, and if the current meter affects the circuit too much, then we can't use it, then it's unusable, then we have wrong readings. The basic premise of a current meter is that it, it has a galvanometer, a measure portion of the current meter. That is, of course, in the old-fashioned analog meters. In digital meters, it's a similar setup, but we don't no longer use the actual galvanometer. We use a different way of measuring the current. And then we have a resistor that is in parallel to the galvanometer that is called a shunt resistor, and the resistor must be very small. Now here we have a schematic of what a variable or multi-range current meter could look like. Here's the galvanometer which has a small amount of resistance. Let's say that the resistance of the galvanometer being very small is about 1 ohm, just for the sake of, of doing the problem here. And then we have three other resistors that are going to be in, in parallel to the galvanometer that can either be a tenth of an ohm, 1 100 of an ohm, or 1 1000th of an ohm, and we have a knob setting that allows us to go between the three different kind of resistors. Let's say we want a, a current meter that can measure current up to 10 milliamps, up to 100 milliamps, and up to a full amp, knowing that the galvanometer, the maximum current of the galvanometer, can be no larger than 1 1,000th of an amp, which is 1 milliamp. So we want to be able to measure larger currents. How do we do that? Well, when we place a resistor that in parallel that is smaller, it will get most of the current so that only a small current will go through the galvanometer. If the resistor here is about one-tenth the size of the resistor of the galvanometer, it will carry about ten times the current. So all we have to do is set up, put in a resistor that is about one-tenth the resistance of the galvanometer. It will carry, therefore, ten times as much current, and therefore we can measure a ten milliamp current with only one milliamp going through the galvanometer. Now that's not exactly the amount that we need, because let me show you what that means. If we put these two in parallel, the equivalent resistance for two resistors in parallel is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. If R1 is equal to 0 0.1 ohm and R2 is equal to 1 ohm, R2 being the resistor in the galvanometer, divided by 0 0.1 plus 1, this is equal to 0 0.1 divided by 1.1, which is equal to, uh, that's about... <clears throat> Uh, zero point, well, let me use a calculator. It's a little bit easier. So 0.1 divided by 1.1 equals 0 0.0909 amps. So 0 0.0909 milliohms, which is approximately 0 0.091 milliohms, which is about one-tenth of the original, which is about one-tenth, or actually about one-eleventh of the original resistance of the galvanometer. It's not quite one-tenth, so that's why I say we need to be a little bit careful here. It's approximately one-tenth of the original resistance. What if we take the second resistor, we have the R equivalent there, is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is equal to 0 0.01 times 1 divided by 0 0.01 plus 1, which is equal to, and again with the calculator, we get 0 0.01 divided by 1.01 equals, and that one is equal to 0 0.0. 0098 milliohms. Notice that that is much closer to 1100, the resistance of the original galvanometer, which means you can measure currents 100 times as large as what the galvanometer can handle. And finally, if we go to the third resistor, R equivalent is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is equal to 0 0.001 that is the amount of <clears throat> that's the amount of resistance in that resistor times one divided by 0 0.001 plus one. And that will give you an equivalent resistance of 0 0.001 divided by 1.001 equals. 
and there we have 0 0.00999 milliamps, which is very close to, um, whoop, I'm missing another zero, am I not? I'm missing another zero. 0 0.00999 milli, not amps, but ohms, which in other words, it's very close to 1 1,000, the resistance of the galvanometer, the equivalent resistance, therefore you can handle a thousand times as much current. So instead of having a one milliamp limit for the galvanometer, you now have a one amp limit, and therefore you can measure current up to one amp. So simply by changing the shunt resistor to various values, you can either dial in a setting where you can measure 10 times the galvanometer current, 100 times the galvanometer current, or 1,000 times the galvanometer current, with a slight difference, the fact that you don't have exactly have one tenth the value, one one hundred the value, or one one thousand the value. And that's how we make multi-range current meters.